day I did like I always do. I run from uh, from Sunday to Thursday. I run every day, and and so I went running and I started crying, and I don't cry. I think everybody's responsible here. People gotten together that day, wanted to figure this out, and wanted to respond in a way that was um, that reflected our values. It is a story that made national headlines. Some students at Georgia Southern University burned books they're required to read. Some are calling it a bold stance. Others say it's just disturbing. John Stone, who teaches at Statesboro High School, texted me and asked me what's going on campus. And I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I was here reading. Um, and so I looked it up and saw the, the Twitter feed. And um, I was angry. Um, I was upset that students would burn books on a campus, you know, a campus where by its definition is supposed to be a sanctuary for books. Then I read the article and everything and at that point I was upset, I was mad, and I just had so many feelings going through me because I found out that it, the, uh, the book was a um, Cuban American author and um, the person that burned the book, it was a white female. So that, that made me mad because I was like, if I would have done that, they would have stole me from Georgia Southern. The students not necessarily just burned the book, but took it one step further and hashtag the author. And that, for me, was definitely where students crossed the line. Georgia Southern's changed a lot. It, it started off um, as a teacher's college um, and then um, eventually grew and grew and grew um, to be quite a regional player. I was surprised by how much more opportunities were given to me than some of my friends who went to maybe bigger colleges. Um, and I think it was because I wasn't just you know, a number. Uh, all of my professors know my name. No, we don't have a bookstore. We have a university store where if you walked in there and just perused the store, you wouldn't see any books. You would see t-shirts, golf balls, and other paraphernalia. I feel as though my administration does not value me enough to say that I would at least investigate what these students did and try to figure out ways in which we might be able to offer some support for these students, not necessarily just consequence, but the support that they need to be able to see a more global perspective. They waste so much money trying to advertise inclu inclusion, but they don't do enough to include them together. I remember being in Vienna not that long ago and seeing on a wall in Vienna, apropos of the Nazi era, it said, first they burned the books and then they burned the people. And when I saw this, I mean, I, it just took my breath away. The students were the living embodiment of white privilege. Um, and I'm not certain of this, but my guess is, is that they still think that they're the victims. Why would people get so outraged by their actions? <laughs> 
white working class students, maybe the first generation, and they hear the term white privilege, it enrages student, white, some white students, not all, who find it very hard to hear about um, the disadvantages of being black or brown in our culture, while they themselves are struggling with their own lives, and they don't feel secure or anything else. This is the difficulty. Think about the burning book. I really don't see it has a freedom of speech. Because if he, she really wants to express herself, she could have write an essay, a post something, talk to the teacher, or, or you know, a different way than burning a book. I do see it like an like a intimidation method for the minority. So I, I think that it's not necessarily a regional problem, though it could be more likely to happen in this region. I would be more comfortable saying it's a national trend, though. On the one hand, I'm thinking to myself, this is a young person. who, At that point, October, what are they, eight weeks from living with their parents? You know, to now being on their own? Um, my husband likes to say, doing really boneheaded things is age-appropriate behavior for a 17-year-old, you know? On the other hand, without any, you know, significant consequences, we're, we're providing space for this hatred to grow. I was proud of the students. I was very proud of many of our students who stood up. Um, I attended the SGA meeting the Wednesday following. The students were furious, not so much at the white supremacist students, interestingly enough, but they were furious at the administration for what they perceived as inaction. Personally, I would have really liked to see the students who were involved in, in the book burning. I don't think they should have been punished necessarily, but I really do wish that there was educational measures taken for them. I, I wish that they could have, should have or been made to uh, attend a, a lecture or attend a class. I welcome those students in my classroom. I hope that the students who sympathize with the book, the students who burned the books and the students who burned the books find their way into a classroom like mine. I think that'd be great. First of all, it means that you're building character. You're not preparing someone for a job. You're building their character. Um, and you're building their character by expanding their horizons of what is out there. Veritas, oh Veritas, you're standing there in your naked mess. I wonder how you'll paint this story, my Veritas, my Veritas. Tell me why you dare to ignore me, my Veritas, my Veritas. The time is up. Why you look at me with such a star? I know you're there, I know you've got my verities, my verities. Oh, verities, you're such a mess. You're standing there in your nakedness. I wonder why you wear that disguise. Oh, tell me sweet lies, yeah, tell me sweet lies. The truth is now. The time is up, so come on now, my Veritas. Truth is you. Truth. Veritas, Veritas, you're standing there in your nakedness.